A layer mask will allow you to hide or show any part of your image. And today we're gonna to show you everything you need to know about layer masks. So here we have our subject on a blank background. Now I wanna make the background a little bit more interesting. So the first thing I need to do is cut our subject out. We're gonna do that with a layer mask. So let's go ahead and click here on our subjects layer. And first thing I wanna do is go to select subject. So when I select my subject, now that I have a selection, I can go ahead and load this into a layer mask, which is going to basically just cut it out. You can create a layer mask by clicking right up here on this layer mask icon in your contextual taskbar or here in your layers menu. There we go. Let's go ahead and click there. Now, as soon as I do, you're going to see, yes, in fact, we've cut our subject out and it looks fantastic. And you can see we have our layer. There we go. If I click on this, you can see a white bounding box around the layer and I can click here on the mask. So each of these has different options. As I click on the layer, you're going to see we have options for selecting our subject and removing the background. If I click here on the mask, we're going to have options for our mask, which we're going to get to in just a second. Okay, now I went ahead and added this balloon image right over top, but what we're going to do is I'm going to click here and drag this underneath my subject. There we go. Let's go ahead and zoom out and we can see already that's looking pretty good because we have like a balloon. It's like a happy birthday image, right? So we have our subject and then we have our layer mask and the layer mask is defining the visibility of our subject layer. It's basically allowing us to see through to the layer beneath it. Now you're going to notice our subject is white and the background is black. So anything white on a layer mask is going to be visible. Anything black is going to be invisible. Now we have a few different options here. Let's go make sure we're clicked on the layer mask. By the way, important, you can click on the layer. It has a white bounding box or you can click on the layer mask and that'll have a white bounding box. So we're gonna click on the layer mask. Now up here at the very top, we're gonna go to our view and you can see a few different options here. On layers is basically just gonna show you what it would look like. Now black and white, this is gonna give you a visual preview of the layer mask itself. So you can see in fact, yes, our subject is white and the background is black making our subject visible and the background invisible. Okay, now you can also click right up here and click on overlay. This is gonna give you a different view of your layer mask so you can see your subject, but you can still see what is gonna be invisible in this red color. All right, let's go ahead and put this back to on layers. Now you can temporarily disable or enable your mask by clicking on this icon right over here, or you can hold shift and click here on the thumbnail for the layer mask. So let's hold shift Click there, it's got a big red X through it, temporarily disabling so we can see through. There we go, let's hold shift and click this back. Next we have our properties or our settings. Here you can af affect your density. Like if you want some of the original background to show through, it basically makes the layer mask less dense. You can see what it actually looks like is light gray and white rather than black and white, allowing us to see through some of that layer mask. And of course, if you need to, you can add some feathering as well, which is just basically gonna soften the edge of your subject or whatever you cut out. So here you can see, we can adjust our feathering to make a slightly better selection. All right, now we can add to this mask or subtract from the mask. Let's go ahead and zoom in. If I add to the mask, you're gonna see all this does is it switches to the brush tool, okay? And it makes white my foreground color. Now, if I paint with my paintbrush here, there we go. Basically what it's doing is it's bringing back some of my image. So no matter what I do on a layer mask, I can always undo this. This is why they're so incredibly powerful because it's non-destructive. You can change a layer mask literally at any time. All right, let's hit undo here. And now I wanna to go to subtract from mask. Now subtract from mask literally just grabs your brush tool and it makes it black. So for instance, if I wanted to subtract out, uh, you know, the, the bun on the top of my subject's head, I could do that. I'm literally just painting black on my layer mask and I can subtract that out. Of course, I can just switch my colors from black to white by hitting X on my keyboard, and then I could paint the bun back if I want to, okay? So I can change this layer mask at any point in time. Let's just hit undo. Now we can update the layer mask. Let's say we go and zoom in and we see, oh, you know what? This area has a little bit of the background visible. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna paint black on my layer mask. Again, I'm just painting with my brush tool now and we can refine this layer mask at any point in time. There we go to make sure that in fact, it just has my subject visible and that the background is completely invisible. Now, if you mess up, if you do something like that, 
no big deal. All you have to do is go to add to mask or just paint with white as your foreground color. There we go and go ahead and just paint that in. Fantastic. Now the next thing we want to make sure we talk about when it comes to layer masking is the select and mask dialog. Super important. So you can get to the select mask dialog. You can double click right here on your layer mask and this will bring you to the select and mask dialog. Now with the select mask dialog, basically it allows you to refine the edge of your layer mask because sometimes you have an edge that doesn't necessarily look 100% realistic, okay? So what we're gonna do is here, let's say our global refinements, I can add a little bit of feathering to the edge. There we go, you can see it's kind of softening the edge, maybe a little bit of contrast, okay? And we can shift the edge in or out. We can also go in with our refine edge brush tool and make sure that things like hair look their best. So as I paint over the hair, it's gonna pick up all the little details here in the hair and make sure it looks fantastic. There we go, let's hit okay on the bottom right and you can see the layer mask looks great. Fantastic, oh, you know what? I see a little bit of a white outline around our subject. That's okay, all we have to do, again, let's get back into that select and mask dialog, double click here on the layer mask and then we're just gonna go, I'm gonna add a little bit of feathering, a little bit of contrast and then where it says shift edge, we're just gonna just shift this in and you can see there's the before and I'm just shifting this edge in, there we go. Now we can't see any of that white line around our subject and we'll hit okay and that looks fantastic. Okay, so you can see there's a lot we can do with layer masks. Now the next thing we're going to do is show you how you can separate a layer from its mask. I'm gonna hit T for our type tool and we're just gonna type in happy, there we go. Let's go ahead and make that text a bit larger. Fantastic, so this is going to be, it's gonna say birthday on the other side. So happy and then birthday. Now, with this happy birthday, I wanna make this happy kind of like right behind our subject, okay? So I wanna take the layer mask that we have our subject and I wanna actually copy it onto our text. So to copy a layer mask from one layer to another, simply hold Alt or Option and click and drag from one layer to another. There we go, and it's going to copy it. Now, in this case, you can see there's a little bit of the Y there because it's actually the opposite. It's showing the opposite of what we want on the layer mask. So we'll need to invert it. This happens quite a bit with layer masks. It's not a big deal. You can hit Control or Command I, or you can click right here in your contextual taskbar and go to Invert Mask. There we go. Boom. Invert Mask. So now we can see Happy appears behind our subject. So the cool thing is I didn't need to reselect our subject and then recreate a layer mask. I was able to duplicate the layer mask from our subject to the text. Okay, now this is pretty cool. So we have our text and we have our layer mask for the text. If I grab my move tool right up here at the top and simply move this over here, you're gonna see that like if I move it, the illusion gets destroyed a little bit, right? Because it's supposed to look like it's behind our subject, but if I just move it over there, no longer am I actually seeing that effect. So let's hit undo. What we wanna do right now, because there's a chain link by default, always with a layer mask, that's going to link your layer, whether it's a text layer or an adjustment layer or a group or a regular layer or a smart object, any type of layer you have, by default, it will be linked with the layer mask. So that means if you move one, the other is gonna move as well. Now, if I press this little chain link right here between them, now they are unlinked. So I can click on the text here and I can move the text around. And as I move the text around, it's appearing like it's going behind my subject because the layer mask is staying in the same place. Now I'm only moving the layer while the mask stays in the same place. How cool is that? So what we're gonna do now, let's create birthday on the other side. I'm gonna go to my text layer that says happy. Let's hit controller command J to do that. Let's go ahead and move this over here to the right hand side. <laughs> I moved the mask by accident. I wanna make sure I move the layer. Make sure the bounding box is on the object you'd like to move. Let's go ahead and move that over there. It just says happy, happy there. Let's go ahead and double click. And now it says happy birthday and we can move this right over here and have it kind of be behind our subject just a little bit as well. So we can see how happy birthday looks really good behind our subject. We were able to take this layer mask and duplicate it. Now, there's another cool thing you can do here, and that's actually put a mask on a group. If you have a lot of different objects you'd like to have the same mask, we're gonna show you how to do that. 
So for this text, let's go ahead and shift click both of these text layers here. I'm gonna hit Control or Command G to group those together, okay? Now, what we're gonna do, instead of having a mask on each one of these text layers, let's go ahead and I'm just gonna hold Alt or Option and take this mask and put it on the entire group. So now that we have our group mask, I can actually delete these individual layer masks on the text layers. I can click and drag that to the trash, okay? We're just going to say delete. We don't, don't actually need that. And delete, there we go. We don't need that either. So now we have our happy text, our birthday text, but because they're in a group that has this mask, look at this, I can still move them around and it has basically the same exact effect as if they were together, right? As I move them around, you're gonna see, there we go. Sometimes there's a slight delay, that's just a graphics card issue, but you can simply move these around, there we go, and you have the exact same effect, where the text, because they're both inside of the same group, and then the mask masks, the, masks them together, there we go, let's left align that, we have the same effect, and no matter what I put in here, let's go ahead and grab one more layer. In fact, what we're gonna do, let's grab a gradient. There we go, gradient layer. We're just going to choose our gradient and we'll just choose like a blue gradient. That looks great. Something like this looks pretty good. And we're gonna go ahead and choose a radial gradient. Fantastic, radial gradient, and you can put it wherever you would like. There we go. And then on our layer mask for our radial gradient, let's just go ahead and put that under birthday. You can see it's behind our subject because we have our layer mask intact. And here on the layer mask for this gradient, I'm gonna hit G for the gradient tool. Let's go here to the radial. There we go. And we'll just go to the basic. Fantastic. And I'm just gonna go from a white to a black. There we go. Let's go ahead and reverse that. Fantastic. And here we have this happy birthday gradient that I'm able to put behind our text, just like that. But because it's underneath the text and it's inside this group, it's gonna be behind our subject. So no matter what we do inside of that group, it's always gonna display behind our subject. There we go, that looks kinda cool. This happy birthday gradient right back there. And you can, of course, change this color at any time. You can double click there and you can make it any color that you'd like. All right, fantastic. So we can see that with this layer mask and these group masks, we're able to create a lot of different effects with our images. So here's a few things to remember. Go ahead and start by selecting out your subject and then click on the layer mask icon to cut your subject out of the background. A layer mask can be changed or updated at any time. And to refine the edge, double click on the layer mask to get into the select and mask dialog. You can copy a layer mask from one layer to another by holding alt or option and clicking and dragging on that layer mask. You can select a layer or its layer mask for individual properties in the contextual taskbar. If you wanna move a layer and have the mask stay in the same place, click on the chain link to unlink the layer and its mask. Masks work on regular layers, smart objects, text layers, adjustment layers, and even groups. And last, don't forget that layer masks are ever evolving. They don't have to be perfect at the very first step. So if you need to continue to refine them more and more throughout time, you can do so. Simply paint white to make an area visible and black to make an area invisible. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning about layer masks. If you did, give us a big thumbs up, click on subscribe to get more free tutorials. Thanks again, and I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.